Hello, I'm Robert Adut with yaymath.org. This is Yaymath in studio. All right, surrounding this beautiful space with lights around me and a glass paneled whiteboard. This is the last video on polynomial functions that we're going to do, and it's solving one beast of a problem using everything that we've learned up to now. I'm excited, we're just gonna let everything out of the bag and show you all the tools and how it would combine into one process to solve this polynomial for its four solutions. Let's just jump right in. Yay math! As we said, yes, fourth degree, so four solutions hiding inside here. The first thing that we can do, since this is part of the rational zero section, is we can come up with the list of potential solutions for this polynomial. The list of potential solutions is all the factors of the constant divided by all the factors of the leading coefficient. Let's write that down. Factors of constant divided by factors of leading coefficient. Let's do it. Factors of the constant, the factors of eight are plus or minus one, two, four, and eight. Divided by factors of leading coefficient, leading coefficient here is one, plus or minus one. So all four of these, or eight technically, plus or minus one and so forth, divided by one is pretty much these four numbers, okay? So that is eight numbers that are potential solutions for this polynomial. Now we could pick one randomly, or pick one, then two, then negative one, negative two, and randomly synthetically divide into here, hoping that the remainder is zero, therefore, it would be a solution because it divides evenly if we uh, divide and the remainder is zero. But we could actually use other processes that we've learned in previous videos, specifically Descartes' rule of signs. So we're going to use Descartes' rule of signs to help us figure this polynomial out without the aid of a calculator. So a brief reminder of Descartes' rule of signs. This is Rene Descartes, who said, I think, therefore I am. That was him. Je pense, donc je suis. That was him. That's what he said. I think, therefore I am. So this is his theorem. Basically, you say if the polynomial has positive solutions, negative solutions, and imaginary, the positive solutions are the number of sign changes throughout the polynomial. Think it through. This is positive. It goes to positive 10, positive 1 to positive 10, positive, positive. So it didn't change. That's zero sign changes. Then the negative sign changes is for f of negative x. If you look through here, f of negative x, plugging in negative x to all x terms here would have the following results. If you plug in negative x to an even power, that negative x times itself an even number of times will basically cancel the negative. So the result of this will just remain the same it'll be positive x to the fourth. Plugging in negative x here results in minus 10 x cubed. Plugging in negative x here retains the positive 33 because you'll have like 33 negative x squared. You plug in negative x, negative x times itself is x squared, so it remains positive 33 x squared. This is an even, or excuse me, an odd power, so that's a negative there. And the constant will never change, so it's positive. So we count the number of sign changes on this blue line upstairs. Here we go. Positive to negative. One, two, three, four. There's four sign changes there. Since there's four total solutions, one of uh, this has zero positive ones. This is four negative. This is zero imaginary because there's four total. According to Descartes' rule of signs, we have to subtract two as many times as we can, as many times possible, to account for the possibility of uh, imaginary solutions. Again, since there are four here, we can subtract by two, putting two here, to account for two imaginaries. The reason we subtract two is that imaginary solutions come in pairs. I's come in pairs, right? Plus or minus I every time. This would be zero. So this is one possible scenario, case one. This is case two. 
And can we still subtract by two? Yes, we can. And that would mean four of these are imaginary. This is case three. In other words, for this polynomial, it either has no positive solutions and all four of them are negative, or it has no positive solutions, two negative ones and two imaginary, or nothing real, neither positive nor negative, and all four solutions are imaginary. If you need more information, I know I sort of blasted through this, Descartes' rule of science, you can watch that video. I break it down in detail, all right? This basically counts to, amounts to counting the sign changes for the positive f of x function and f of negative x. And then subtracting by two as many times as you can to account for the possibility of imaginary solutions. But what tell, this tells us is something very fascinating. What this tells us is that under no circumstances are any solutions positive. See that? There's no positive solutions. Solutions are either going to be all negative or even all imaginary. So as far as the candidate roots go, eight candidates just reduced to four. Negative one, negative two, negative four, negative eight. Now we can synthetically divide only those to try to depress this polynomial down to uncover its solutions. Let's go through systematically and synthetically divide negative one in there. See if it divides evenly. All right, negative 1. And 1, 10, 33. 1, 10, 33, 38, and 8. It's five terms in there. There they are. All right, if it divides evenly, the remainder will be 0. Let's find out. Drop it. Multiply. Add. Multiply. Add. That would be 20. Um, minus 6, 24. Multiply negative 24. Add would be 12, right? Multiply negative 12. Nope, doesn't work. So negative 1 is not a solution. Try again. Unless I did it wrong. <laughs> Always a possibility. So let's try negative 2. Oh, in other words, in other words, check this out. Assuming it was right. These are four candidate negative solutions. We just proved that negative one is not a solution. Therefore, it's impossible for this to be true. Because there's not all four negative solutions. Because those four would have to be these. Let's find out. Ooh, unless the solutions were irrational. I'm going to take that back. I'm going to take that back. Because that's negative solutions that could potentially be irrational. Negative square roots and such. So let's not be too hasty, Robert. All right? Stick to the truth. Negative 2 going in. Drop it. Negative 2. Add. Negative 16. What's this? Uh, 17? Should be, yep. Negative 34, add four, multiply, boom, we got it, nice, nice. One down, three to go. So let's depress this polynomial, depressed. Don't feel bad, man, don't be depressed. All right, I care about you. X plus two, one solution, there it is. Remaining polynomial. Here it is. Remainder, constant, x, x squared, x cubed. Bring it down. x cubed plus positive 8x squared plus 17x plus 4. Okay. Hiding inside, we're going to get you three, the three left. They're in there. We did negative 1, negative 2, negative 4. Negative 8, we're a candidate. We tried that, we tried that. Let's try negative 4. We'll try negative 4 hiding inside here. Please work. <laughs> Please. All right, bring it down. Negative 4. All right, let's break this one down. 1, 8, 17, and 4. It's kind of fun is to discover it together. I don't know if negative 4 works. 
1. We're going to find out together. Negative 4. 4. Multiply. Negative 16. Add 1. Negative 4. Boom! 0. Nice. So we found our second solution, which is negative 4. All right? Let's bring down all our factors. So this would be x plus 4. And hiding inside here, that's remainder, constant, x, x squared, just going in ascending order upwards. So this would be x squared plus 4x plus 1. Okay, let's bring down all this other stuff. That synthetic division served us. Bring down all factors that we know. Okay, we're breaking it down. So we found two factors, therefore two solutions. And we have one more factor to go. Hiding in here are the remaining two solutions. So let's see if we can factor this. Now that it's in x squared form, a quadratic as it's called, we'll see if we can factor this. Multiply to 1, add to 4. Are there numbers that multiply to 1 and add to positive 4? No, it's impossible because 1 times 1 is 1, which will not add to 4. So we need to solve this using other methods. We can do the quadratic formula or completing the square. At this level, I'd suggest completing the square because you really get to know what's going on and it's a little more elegant than quadratic formula, although both would be fine. So let's go ahead and solve. Negative b plus or minus square root of. No, what am I doing? I'm breaking my own rule. Got it in my own head. Completing the square. x squared plus 4x equals negative 1. All right, we had plus 1 over here. I subtracted 1 on both sides. We take half of b and square it, half of b and square it, and add that to both sides. So half of 4 is 2, squared is 4, so plus 4 here, plus 4 here. And then we have x plus 2 squared, because this factors to x plus 2 times itself, equals 3. Square root both sides. like these patriotic colors popping through the board here. x plus 2 equals plus or minus root 3. Whenever you take the square root of both sides, we always require plus or minus on both sides. Isolate x by subtracting 2 on both sides. We get x equals negative 2 plus or minus root 3. There are the remaining two solutions. 1, 2, and there are the two elements in there x equals 2, x equals negative 2, and x equals negative 4. Boom, and boom. And it was proven true what happened before. You see, all these are real. There's no imaginary solutions in here. And they're all negative. They're all negative. Negative 2, negative 4. Negative 2 plus root 3 will still be negative. It's just under 0. And negative 2 minus root 3 is also negative. So I'm glad I took it back. Turns out it's case 1. This graph hits the x-axis four times, and all four solutions are negative. Right? We can get a feel for it visually. Let's actually do it here. Something like that. It hits at negative 2. Hits at negative 4. It hits at negative 2 plus root 3. That's like right around here. A negative 2 minus root 3, this is like 1.7. So negative 2 minus 1.7 is negative 4.7 or so. Right there. This graph faces up. All right, positive, even degree. So it faces up. So you think of it like a W. 1, 2, 3, 4, something like that. With a y-intercept of 8. All right, so what we did was we did the rational zero theorem to find potential solutions. We used Descartes' rule of signs to help us narrow it down and say that none of the solutions, it turns out, were positive in this case. And then we just guessed which of those poss possible solutions divided evenly. And when they divided evenly, we're able to factor them down, factor out the solutions here to continue to write this in factored form called the depressed polynomial. So that once you have these in factored form, you can see within them what the solutions are. After we got two solutions synthetically, that we then solve this using completing the square and found the remaining two hiding inside this.
All right. I hope that clicked. It was fun to sort of go for it on this last problem of the chapter. Thanks for watching this video on polynomials and everything for Yay Math. It's awesome to provide this for you. All right, this is me signing off. Goodbye. 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 Oh, stay. Bye.